Did you know that if you have a Samsung, you can have different lock screens depending on your time and location? And with One UI 6, you can now modify the lock screen's wallpaper, clock style, shortcuts, etc., depending on the mode you have enabled within the Modes and Routines app. So I could set a unique lock screen for when I'm working, another for when I'm driving, one for when I get home, and another for when the sun goes down. It's pretty awesome. And sure, One UI 5.1 already lets you have different lock screens for different modes, but you're only allowed to change the wallpaper, nothing else. One UI 6 gives you a lot more freedom. On top of that, with One UI 6, Samsung decided to use a different font altogether. It's a bit lighter and more expanded, and it honestly looks a lot more modern and stylish. I really like it. An even bigger change though that most of you have probably heard about is that the notification and quick settings panel have been completely redesigned. I really like how they look. All the notifications are now spaced out for easier recognition. The media player now has the album cover expanded to the entire background, and the seek bar has a neat animation. It's really cool. Samsung also added that brightness bar on that notification page so that you no longer need to expand to the quick settings to access it. However, when you do expand the quick settings, you get an even bigger change, at least looks wise. Everything is now separated into its own cards, and some tiles even get special treatment with their own dedicated space like the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Smart View, and device controls. I also like that they added the Eye Comfort Shield and Dark Mode right below the brightness bar because those are usually what I toggle when I adjust the brightness. But with all these incredible new looks, I can't help but notice that there are some downgrades. For example, with this redesign taking up the entire screen, it does make it a lot harder to use with one hand, especially if you're trying to reach the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth tile at the top. On top of that, you can't seem to change those bigger tiles to any other settings, but I do like that when you tap them, they expand for even more configuration. But as for the rest of the tiles below, uh, you can still toggle them on or off with a single tap, and with some, you can expand them as well, but many other tiles that used to be expandable just aren't anymore. So if you'd like to configure them even further, you will need to long press them, kicking you into the settings. So that's kind of annoying. Hopefully they fix that before the final stable release. They also added a new gesture to let you get to the quick settings panel much faster by simply swiping down the top right corner, similar to how iOS does it. To enable this, you just have to tap on the pencil icon within the quick settings, and then choose quick settings instant access. And within this page, it's also nice that you can now configure the tiles within the compact quick panel. By the way, if you like that I jump straight into the action with no silly intro, drop a thumbs up and I'll be sure to continue this in future videos. When jumping to the home screen, there aren't any massive changes, just a few minor ones, but they are appreciated. The app icon's text are now limited to just a single line instead of two, and some of the Samsung apps no longer have the text Galaxy or Samsung in their name. Cleans up the app drawer nicely. Whenever you touch and hold an app within the search results, you'll also get access to their shortcuts, which is really useful. Plus, there are some new widgets. The first is a new weather widget that updates you on important weather alerts like incoming thunderstorms, snow, rain, sunset and sunrise times, etc. And when you tap on it, you'll be greeted with a new looking weather app. A ton of tiny things have been moved around here, certain text has been changed, and it looks a lot less cluttered. There's even a new map that shows up whenever you try to add a new city. In it, you can swipe around and wherever you tap, you also get a quick glimpse of the weather in that area. Really useful. Suddenly, Samsung's weather app is starting to become my favorite. Another fantastic new widget is one for the camera. This lets you choose a specific shooting mode to instantly jump to it whenever you tap it. And you can choose to use any picture that you'd like for the background or use the most recent picture you took. I'm not sure how much time this will save you, but it could come in handy if you're a photographer. The Smart Suggestions widget also got a redesign, making it much simpler and showing off an extra row of apps. Plus, just like any other Samsung widget, you can finally customize it by changing the background color and even have it exclude any apps of your choosing. And with all these new widgets, you can combine them with our new Samsung-inspired walls to get a clean and modern look. We even made several walls for foldable devices. Plus, we also made a ton of amazing widgets that are really customizable and adaptive, fits in really well with any Samsung device. Check them out on our Patreon link down below. As for the lock screen, One UI 6 also brought some sweet new features. As I said at the beginning, you can have more unique lock screens depending on the mode you have enabled, 
But on top of that, you're now given more freedom to move the clock around to whatever position you'd like at the top before it was pretty much stationary. And you also get a few more clock styles and fonts to spice things up. So that's really nice. Plus, when you do turn the screen on or off, you can also see a new animation similar to the pixels. It's really beautiful. As for the sharing menu, whenever you share pictures or videos, you now get a larger preview to give you one more chance to see what you're sending. If you have an app open in pop-up view, it will now also appear within the recent screen, which is really handy if you have multiple open. A pretty minor change, but still useful. Here's something significant though. The emojis within the Samsung keyboard have all been updated with a new look. They're now a lot brighter, smoothened, and honestly a bit cuter. They're not my favorite emoji style though, and I know a lot of people don't like them as well, but I also don't hate them. I for sure still prefer Google's emojis over Samsung's though. Within the system settings, there are also some new bells and whistles. First, it looks slightly different now with the profile icon extending past the first menu and your email address being removed below the name. The icons are also a bit darker, the sliders are thicker, and the switches are slightly different. Even within several menus, things have been moved around. And again, everything feels a lot cleaner and simpler. I also like that the battery menu is now at the very front of the settings, which is a great move. I hated jumping into separate menus just to get more information about the battery. And besides the UI change, you also get a few new features. Like the airplane mode is a bit smarter now. If you turn on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth while airplane mode is enabled, your phone will remember that preference. So the next time you turn on airplane mode, the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth will remain on. There's also a new auto blocker mode within the security and privacy menu that gives you an extra level of protection. It basically blocks unknown apps from being installed, checks for malware, and even blocks USB cables from trying to hack into your phone. Perfect for the airport, but I still wouldn't trust plugging your phone into any random port. And finally, within the accessibility menu, you get a few new things. You can now customize the thickness of the cursor whenever you're typing in a text field. The magnification window lets you choose its size, whether you want it to be partial or full screen, and some other changes were thrown in there. Anyways, onto Samsung's camera app. This is where we start to see many interesting, but still minor new changes. For instance, some of the icons within the viewfinder have gotten a complete makeover, and in that same row of icons, you now have a new one to let you quickly change the resolution. It only appears when you're in the photo or promo though. When you actually use the filters and even the face effects, you'll see a dial instead of a slider, making it easier to make more precise adjustments with one hand. If you're a big user of watermarks, you can now choose where they appear at the top or bottom of the photos. And you probably didn't know this existed, but on Samsung phones, there's a feature called Auto FPS that helps you record brighter videos at night by optimizing the frame rate. With One UI 6 though, you can now be more specific and only letting the camera use 30 FPS or still use both 30 and 60 FPS for a brighter recording. Honestly, I would leave it as is though. Okay, I know those were some pretty boring camera changes, but here are some more exciting ones. Whenever you shoot any photos, Samsung optimizes them to provide better quality shots. The only string attached is that it does take a few moments to get this higher quality. It may not seem like a big deal, but when you're shooting fast paced events, this could get annoying. With One UI 6 though, you can now customize Samsung's camera optimizations. Within the camera settings, underneath a new menu called Advanced Intelligence Options, you can change the quality optimizations with three options. The lower you go, the lower the camera quality will be, but the faster the shots can be snapped. Just something to consider next time you're out shooting something like a soccer game or trying to capture your dog. The other alternative is to swipe down on the shutter button for burst mode. Another great feature is that when you're scanning documents, One UI 6 now has a new auto scan feature to let the phone automatically snap and crop a document for you without you needing to press anything. Then you can make finer adjustments within the edit screen. Extremely convenient if you're scanning multiple pages. Plus, you no longer need the scene optimizer feature enabled to scan documents because both settings have been separated in One UI 6. But by far my favorite new feature that Samsung has added is that when you enable the grid lines within the camera settings, you now get a level line in the middle of the screen to no longer have your pictures come out looking crooked. And the best part is that it works on every camera mode except panorama with the rear lenses. It's something that the pixels have been doing for years, but I'm still glad that it's finally come to Samsung phones. Jumping into Samsung's gallery app, here you'll also find some new hidden talents. 
Like when you clip something from an image, you'll now be able to easily save it as a sticker to use later when you're editing pictures or videos. When viewing a story you created, you can easily add or remove content by just swiping up on it into the thumbnail view. When you're trying to move pictures or videos between albums, you can now touch and hold any media and then use your other hand to navigate to the album where you want to drop them. Pretty useful. And finally, while viewing a picture or video, you can swipe up to go into detail view and on this screen, you'll now get quick access to extra editing effects to apply them immediately. When you jump into the photo editor to make even more changes, here you'll find many new options as well. First, they changed the entire layout of all the buttons and background elements, so that's fun. But something really useful is that when you add text, stickers, or even start drawing on a picture and then save those changes, you can still modify them later on in the future. So if you decide that you'd like to remove a sticker a few months down the line, you can easily do that without removing any of the other edits. Before, on One UI 5, you can only revert back to the original version, which would remove all the edits you made. On top of that, when you create custom stickers, you can now draw on top of them to make them more personal. Oh, and when you're making any edits, you finally have the undo and redo buttons at the top to fix any mistakes. Pretty great. Now let's talk about all the Samsung apps that have been updated with One UI 6. Starting with the calendar, there is now a new schedule page, making it a lot easier to see all your upcoming events, tasks, and reminders, all in chronological order. On top of that, you're finally able to view and add reminders within the calendar app without opening the reminder app. I mean, seriously, it makes so much more sense this way. And speaking of the reminder app, here are also a few new features. You'll first notice that the UI has been modified a bit, like you can now see how many reminders you have at the top, along with each category. Photo and website previews are also much smaller now. Plus, there are two new pages for reminders that are oriented around your location and those that have no alerts basically categorizing everything a lot better. And when you do create a reminder, you finally get to choose the entire day instead of a specific time. And one last thing, when you share content to the reminder app, whether it's a link or a picture, you'll get a full editing page to modify the reminder before it gets created. Really useful. For Samsung's internet browser, you can finally have a video keep playing in the background whenever you switch to a new tab or leave the app entirely. As a matter of fact, this feature is also released on the Play Store version, so you can try it out right now. You just tap on the hamburger menu, go into the settings, scroll down to useful features, and turn on background play. And when you're using a Samsung internet on a large screen device like a tablet, foldable phone, or even Samsung DeX, the tab list will be shown in multiple columns so that you can instantly see more tabs on the screen. Really useful. Within the modes and routines app, you have way more actions to work with. Like when creating a routine, you can now start integrating Android Auto, mobile data, playing media, and more. Trust me, you're going to want to dig through this app because it can seriously take your Samsung to the next level. The My Files app has also been a target of a Samsung redesign. For the better too, because it has a clear looking interface with a more straightforward design and smaller icons. Plus, they made it so much easier to manage your storage by letting you clear the app cache deleting duplicate files and more. Anyways, that's pretty much everything the first beta of Samsung's One UI 6 update has to offer. Of course, you also get all the regular native Android 14 features like the new and improved back gesture, health connect, etc. If you'd like a detailed review of Android 14, I'll leave that video in the cards. As for my overall thoughts on Samsung's latest software update, I really like the direction that they're taking it. It obviously comes with so many new features and many beautiful redesigns, and even though they modified many of the screens, they still managed to keep that One UI theme that many Samsung users enjoy. Not bad, Samsung. If you plan to update to this beta version, I can't guarantee that you won't experience any bugs or problems, especially considering that this is a beta update. I myself have seen a few bugs in the few days that I have been using it, but for the most part, uh, they haven't made the entire software unusable. So if that means anything to you and you still want to update your Samsung phone to One UI 6, here's how to do it. First, this update as of right now only works on the Galaxy S23 lineup. So I'm sorry if you don't have any of those devices, but you will need one of them. Then you need to open up the Samsung Members app and look within the banners at the top to be able to join the One UI 6 beta program. Once you join, you can find the update within the system settings. It's that easy. 
Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, a big thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Click this video right here to learn about some awesome hidden One UI tricks that you probably didn't know about. I'll catch you over there. Kapow!